So welcome, welcome to another Cosmic Rose Honey Wednesday. So how the Q&A works is that any questions you have pertaining to your Kundalini process, um, anything that's happening on your personal healing journey, um, your awakening journey, this is the place for it. Um, yeah, usually, you know, things that might be coming up on your journey, you're like, is this normal? What's going on? Or anything that pertains to healing your relationship with the different parts of yourself, your fear, your sadness, your pain. That's really my jam. It's what I'm so passionate about. So yeah, the floor is open. If you have any questions, just unmute yourself. I know. I was like, I know, fella, you're ready. You're like, I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right, tell me, what's what's your question today? I'm excited. <laughs> for today, thank you. Uh, for today, I mean, you know, when I'm in this cocoon phase, like stuck in my room, just doing the Kriyas, I just had a question that popped into my head. Like, mm -hmm. What are these Koreas doing to me? Like, if I didn't have this spontaneous Kundalini awakening, does this mean that I'm going to have to face all those uh, karma or those reasons that are making me crying and vomiting in this process? Like, I will have, um, I, like, uh, is the, are the Koreas making me skip the circumstances that could make me cry and experience those shakings and stuff like that? And mm. like, uh, if I didn't have these, I uh, I would have a life path. And if I'm having them, I am like switching my life path. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I totally hear your question. And that's actually a really, really great question. So my understanding is that it's not necessarily switching your life path, but the expression of the spontaneous Kriyas, right? When you have your body shaking, you're crying, all these things, it's facilitating your ability to meet with what your soul has to learn through those different traumas and through those different pains. So for example, like I know for myself on my journey, um, prior to experiencing, for example, the spontaneous Kriyas of crying, 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 like I just made a reel about that yesterday. Like, gosh, I cried for God knows how many months, like just every single day I cry, I cry and I cry. But by allowing myself to cry, what that shifted within my nervous system is the ability to sit with my pain, is the ability to actually meet with a lot of the things that I was shoving under the carpet for the many years prior to my life. So experiencing the Kriyas and my understanding and my lived experience will not make you skip the things that you have to learn, but it will actually help you confront them head on, not from a place of avoiding what is going to cause you pain and discomfort, right? But in Instead, you're actually developing the capacity to feel deeper. The kriyas, the movements, the crying, those expressions actually support you in coming back to your body. Because a lot of the times when people think that, oh, I'm actually facing this thing that I have to learn or that I have to heal through, many times actually... It's the mind trying to figure out a way out of it. It's the mind trying to get get through it, get out of it. But it's not actually the body experiencing what needs to be learned and actually receiving the lesson in an embodied way. So the Kriyas happening support your nervous system and building the capacity to learn your soul lessons, to integrate the things that you're meant to um, integrate through. Does that make sense? Yes, a lot. And thank you. And Oh, I think your audio, your audio cut off, Bella. How about now? Okay, you're back. Great. So how does this, uh, like the release of these traumas are, that are in me, in my energy body, like how does this release affect, impact my circumstances in my real life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, like really before, great question. Before, yeah, before the yeah. spontaneous colony awakening, I was meant to have these circumstances after the release, like, how does this, what, what am I going to experience? Yeah, like? yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a really great question. So again, it, it depends on the specific context of what is the trauma, what is the pain, what is, um, you know, for example, like us completing the trauma of um, I'm not lovable and therefore I will be abandoned, right? Healing that will, for example, support you in, let's say, just hypothetically in a romantic relationship context like I I know this very well because this is like a huge part of what I had to heal through when I was able to complete those trauma loops and the stories around I'm unlovable right people always abandon me blah 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 how that shifted my life circumstances is that the people 
and like the next partner, the person that I attracted into my life was of a very different energetic alignment than the previous relationships that I used to attract, which were all mirroring my trauma and mirroring the story that I am unlovable, that people are going to abandon me, that relationships are hard, um, you know, all, all these different things that I used to hold on as a part of that trauma story. So let's say in this context, you know, how healing that um, trauma loop can support you in shifting your circumstances is that quite frankly, you no longer become an energetic match to your protection mechanisms and to those trauma based beliefs and stories, right? So that could be how it supports you. Now, just from a different perspective, is that the more that we're able to heal our relationship with those fragmented parts of ourselves, the parts that have been shamed, the parts that have feared, the parts that have been told, like you can't feel, you can't be sad. What happens as a whole is that we start to carry this new level state of peace and groundedness, which doesn't necessarily mean that, and for sure it does not like at all, doesn't mean that we don't experience pain. It doesn't mean that we don't experience hardship and challenges, but what it does mean tangibly is that in your day to day, you no longer become so deeply affected and emotionally moved by the circumstances, right? We're still human when the pain happens, when the heartbreak happens, when um, things don't go to plan, you're still going to feel the fear. You're still going to feel the sadness, the disappointment, the grief, all these different emotions. But what changes is that you are no longer identifying with the emotion and you're no longer identifying with the experience as this is who I am or like what's wrong with me or why is this happening? There's a higher state of equanimity that is now accessible where you're able to hold what you're going through in your human experience and simultaneously the awareness and the remembrance that I am a manifestation and an emanation of the divine as I'm going through this, right? So what that allows for us is to go through life and really be so deeply embodied in our human experience. We let our hearts break again and again. We still cry, we still yell, we still feel our rage. But who we are, how we see ourselves at our core is no longer being influenced by the circumstances, right? So instead, we actually have this conscious ability to say, this is who I am and this is how I lead myself through all these differing circumstances. So what that then allows us to do, again, is just live life with a lot more peace right like yes pains are still going to happen but how we show up for ourselves in those moments how we're able to make new meanings that are no longer disempowering meanings like this is all my fault i'm not good enough blah 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 that just changes our experience of life and when we change our experience of life this is how we change our life as a whole right because everything that we're feeling is just really how we're responding what is our meaning what is our experience of the circumstances that are showing up does that make sense i agree a lot yeah can i add one layer Mm-hmm. If I don't take the place of someone, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, does it mean that after the release of this karma and traumas that are in me, that does it mean that I'm aligning with my soul's purpose? Like before this, I was living from my ego, and after that, I'm with the soul. I'm aligned. Yes. Yes, for the most part, I mean, in a very simplistic way of looking at it, yes, for sure, a hundred percent. Because what we're doing is like, if you kind of think about like the soul's purpose, the understanding, the knowing of who we are has never been gone. That is what has always been, what is, what will always be. But what happens is that as we come into our human experience, as we move through life, as we have inherited generational traumas and pains, as we move through this life that tells us that it's not safe to be who we are among so many other things, it's like that knowing, that crystal clear understanding of who we are as a soul, who we are in our divinity, our soul's purpose, that has been tarnished over time, right? There's debris, there's dirt all over it. When we start to heal our relationship with ourselves we start to um, transmute a lot of this trauma and pain back into life force you're able to feel more deeply what happens is you're beginning to clean away all the debris right so that that which has always been there and that which will always be there now just becomes more visible so it's not that it's something that we're getting it's not like something that we're realizing and now grasping and, and finding and figuring out and searching for It's always been here and it will always be here, but it's creating the environment where we can clean off our inner vision and actually be able to perceive what has always been here. Does that make sense? Yes, a lot. And what will I benefit from after, after like 
appear and after that this uh, light in me appears like what are going to be the benefits of this light appearing the, the I hope light my appearance is, i don't know how to call it like the diamond inside us that after cleansing it from the debris and all Got that it. stuff yeah. yeah what i will i benefit from <laughs> everything <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, where do I even get started? Right? Well, first of all, as I as I explained, one of the greatest things, and it can sometimes seems intangible because it's hard to describe and put into words, but what it allows for us truly is to have a different relationship with our life, right? Most of the times, you know, when we say in a spiritual sense, you know, we are experiencing ignorance, we have forgotten who we are. What happens is that we live life through this lens of I'm alone, I'm separate, I have to control, I have to figure things out. And that as a whole diminishes our fullest experience of life, right? Everything feels difficult. It feels contracted. Um, when something's wrong, we, we make a meaning out of it and then we make ourselves feel bad. And it's like all these endless loops. When you're able to allow the diamond inside to shine through, we're clearing the debris. Again, it allows us to really live this life the way that it's meant to be lived. Meaning that we remember that we're all emanations of the divine that decided to incarnate in human form and experience things deeply. To have what it means to be a human like to to have the pain to have the joy to have the ecstasy to have the sadness to have the grief all the waves of the human emotions all the waves of the human experience can actually can actually be fully felt but without the shaming without the making wrong without the feeling like i am alone through this so in general you know in a more kind of like intangible sense but really this is one of the biggest pieces of it is that it radically changes how you are in relationship to your life and it also allows us to truly, genuinely cherish each and every moment that we have alive. Because what happens is that when we're clouded by the trauma, when we're clouded by the pain, our nervous system is not wired to think, how can I live every single day with more awe, gratitude, and joy, right? Our nervous system is like, how do I make sure that nothing kills me? And how do I make sure that I'm on hypervigilance and alert to make sure that I don't hurt, right? Living a life trying to avoid pain is very different than living a life where we're grateful and we're in awe of each and every moment that we have breath moving through us. And by being able to allow that debris to be brushed off that's what it gives us back is truly the fullest experience of life in general you know kind of some of the more tangible things it allows you to no longer question things as much right no longer like am i doing the right thing is it the right thing the wrong thing oh my gosh where am i supposed to go like it puts you straight into your body where you don't do but you notice how you are being done through. You're being moved in your life. Synchronicities happen. You're responding. You're co-creating. You're dancing with life as opposed to just being on the side with your arms crossed and going like, you know, like life isn't working. I can't control it. It doesn't work out. You're right there in the midst of creating with life. So those are some of the biggest things, you know, it's like life just becomes a very different experience. And I would say that it also helps us to move past the egoic, like, oh, do I get everything that I want, right? It helps us to live in what is the divine's highest vision for us, not, oh, did I manifest that in like 30 days? Or like, did I get this thing? Did I get that thing on my wish list? You're going to get that probably and even more, but beyond what the ego construct says, this is what I should have. Wow. Thank you, Ella. My pleasure. Thank you for the great question. Yeah, as usual. Thank Yay. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> All right. Is this Samaya? Is that how I pronounce your name? Hello. It's so nice to meet you. Oh, let me do ask to unmute. See if you can unmute. Yay. Hello. hello Welcome. Hello. <laughs> My ex, Samia. Thank you. Thank you. Samia. Thank you. Okay. Nice to meet yeah. you. Talk about synchronicities. Oh my God. Like, um, like I forgot about this but I set the alarm in my phone I was like oh my god let me get on let me get on let me do this and it was you and then your post yesterday you posted saved me because I've been going purging for about four six weeks and then the, the Kriya has gotten much much better and I'm still learning how to use the energy but everything has changed in my life and mm -hmm. exactly what you were going through I'm going through right now everything and I saw that and I've been crying and crying and I saw that and I was like thank I was meant to see that I was like and I saw it late at night and I was like thank you thank you thank you because like it's exactly what I've been going through like mm -hmm. to the T and I was like thank you for posting this part of it before you get to the other side yeah so that's why I really really wanted to share about number one 
Yeah. Um, like, 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 the, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it pulled me out of some darkness last night. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, I noticed the purging, like I said, the careers have gotten better when they first started a year and a half ago. Um, you know, I made some changes in my life and decided to get off some things and everything else. And that's when the careers started, but the careers got so much better. They were very, very intense. I didn't understand what's going on. Um, I got involved in other groups that, you know, talk about this um, and I got more comfortable with it and more comfortable with it. It kind of integrated more and more. So whoever's like dealing with strong Kriyas like that, it integrates more and more, the more you get comfortable with it and you welcome it and movement mm -hmm. helps. So movement helps, dancing helps, yoga helps, um, make space for it, you know, maybe in the morning at night, it helps. It, 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 it was a journey, but it helped a great deal. Um, but I've been watching you for a little while. I, I hope to, I definitely hope to work with you when things um, mm -hmm. line up. I know I'm meant to do what you do because I, my body moves naturally like that because of my, you know, Lainey. So like everything you do, I'm just like, someone else does it out there. Somebody yes, else understands. I'm not alone. Yes. I, was, I was just like, I'm not alone. I just got to get there. So, you know, I'm trying to get things in order and, and work different things out, but I know I'm meant to do similar things to what you're doing. So I can't wait to work with you one day. Oh, I cannot wait. Cause I was like, someone's like me and that yes. feels so good. Cause you know, you can't talk about this to everybody. No yeah. one really understand. You can read about it and everything else, but unless you're really going through it and through the thick of it in a supportive community, they don't understand. They don't yeah. understand. I mean, yeah. kulalini.org is out there and somebody else is doing different things like that, but um, you understand. And then even hearing what you're saying and, and your um, wisdom and insight that's coming through you, I'm like, she's on point. She's, she's <laughs> in the flow. She's in the flow. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching and I... And I Pray to get there with you because I'm feeling it. So I just had yeah. to say that I'm gonna follow you, and when the time's right, I know I'm going to be working with you. I know I am. I know oh, I am. That makes me so happy. Thank you. Thank but you your for video saved me last night. Oh. It saved me because I was like, I'm right there with you. Yeah. You know that's I'm so. Always crying. I'm that's always so crying. wild. <laughs> yeah, because yesterday, like, I wasn't planning on posting that, but again, I always like nowadays my relationship with content is I sit in deep meditation you know in these cosmic rose honey meditations and I mm -hmm. asked the divine mother I'm like what needs to come through today and it was like this is the real I'm like okay and of course just yeah. hearing that reflection it's so special thank you thank you yeah so look forward yes. to when the timing aligns but in the yes. meantime you know we're here every Wednesday come join us come in okay. this frequency and yeah it's gonna be so great Thank you. Say, thank you. Thank that. I'm telling you that video. I don't know anybody else seen it, but that video saved. That was like, <laughs> I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone, but I really, someone's really putting it out there. Like, this is how I feel. I feel out of love. I feel no one wants me. I feel this. Nothing's working out. I got zero to think. Like everything you said, I was like, thank you. Thank you for being raw like that. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Marcia, I love this so much. Yes. Yeah, exactly, Bella. I like, honestly, the facilitator path is something that your heart knows, right? Like Samia just said, it's like, you just feel it, you know, the movements are coming through and, and it's a call that is so strong. That's not even the mind, like, should I do this? Should I not? Um, it's something that calls you forward. So when the timing aligns and you know it's the time, like you will know. Um, so yeah, that's so good. Thank you for sharing. All right. Does anybody have any other shares or questions before we move into our meditation? All right. So let me just go through very quickly then what the Cosmic Rose Honey Meditation is all about for those of us who are new into the space. So the Cosmic Rose Honey Meditation is a transmission and a frequency of Kundalini consciousness that is held in the space. So this is a little bit different than what I facilitate in Kundalini Codes Activation, which is working more with the Prana Shakti, with the light force. This is more working with the consciousness. So essentially, this is a downward descending force of the divine mother's grace that comes through the crown that literally feels like cosmic honey that is being poured over your crown and it begins to open your higher centers opens your throat your heart all the way down and facilitates your kundalini awakening process during the meditation this is going to be a 20 minute silent meditation 
all you've got to do is just soften and breathe deeply and come into your body and your senses and what you're feeling as much as possible. Any little sensation that you feel, the more that you focus your awareness on it, the more it'll just allow the energy to continue to support you. Um, and, and that's basically it. So just opening yourself up to receive this grace. If it is helpful for you, if you find that your mind is kind of drifting off and you want to have some kind of a visual cue, what I often get people to do is just when your eyes are closed, you just turn your inner gaze up towards the crown of your head. And with every breath in, you feel like you're breathing in that cosmic rose honey force that is just dripping through your crown. So that could be really helpful um, if you like to have a visual. And so again, the, this grace is the embodiment of truth love peace and bliss and the experiences of it can feel subtle at times although sometimes i know some of you have mentioned crying and feeling movements and stuff like that but in general the consciousness um the consciousness resonance is less like about body movements and more so just melting and merging with the field of non-duality okay so let's get comfortable if you need to shake out your shoulders move your neck, twist it side to side, anything that helps you to get as comfortable as you can be. Whenever you are ready, we're going to sit up in a position where your spine can be as long and relaxed as possible. So if it's good for you to sit on a chair, then you can plant both of your feet firmly rounded into the earth. If you are sitting cross-legged, just make sure that your sit bones are really rooted to the surface that you're seated on, lengthening your your spine all the way from the tailbone, the coccyx all the way up to the crown of the head. And when you're ready, you just close your eyes, allowing your awareness to turn inwards. You can slightly tuck your chin in. I'm just beginning to breathe deep and soft. We're going to begin the meditation for 20 minutes and I will let you know when the meditation is over. Have a great meditation.
taking a deep breath in, deep breath out, just allowing yourself to slowly come back a little bit more at a time, grounding back into this time and space. Whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes.